I'm going to introduce you to one of the greatest wonders of the world, Sphinx. No, not the statue with the horrible nose job in Giza. Or the incredibly ugly, yet rare, hairless cat. Sorry to the owners of that cat. Not really. Sphinx is the tool that makes documentation fun and easy. It has an easy to understand and use formatting syntax and will automatically pull the comments from your code for auto-generated documentation. So let's see how to make the magic happen. Before we hit that, check out both this page and this page for more detailed information. I'm just going to go over some of the simple use of Sphinx to get you started, but this is great reference for later. Okay, so I'm in my project directory. Right now, just have my Python file. It's a single Python file. Obviously, your project would probably have a lot more than this. To get going, we type sphinx quick start. It'll ask us some questions, such as the root path for documentation. We can put our documentation in a separate folder if we wanted to. For simplicity's sake, I'll keep it all in the same folder right now. This question we'll just say no to. Just have separate source. We don't need to have separate source and build directories. This is just a prefix for some of the directories. Some of the stuff you can just ignore and then leave it the default project name. You'll probably want to put it in. I'm just going to put in homework too. Then you'll want to put in your name. And we can give a version here, 1.0. And we'll say the release is 1.0.0, .0 .0, etc. Just boilerplate stuff. This you want to make sure you leave it the default, the source file suffix. You should leave it as .rst. A .rst file indicates formatting and structure of the documentation itself. And this is where Sphinx will start with the first document that it'll look at, the first RST document it'll look at for structure. Just leave that at the default of index. You definitely want to hit yes here. Autodoc is very helpful. This is what's going to generate documentation for your code automatically. And you don't need to hit yes for that. The rest of the stuff, you can just hit no here. Uh, you don't need this either. Don't need that. This is just a simple example. You can check this stuff out later. Don't need that. It's just for generating pictures and other pretty stuff. Now, this is important. You do want to hit yes here. You do want to create a make file. If you're working on Windows, you want to hit yes here as well, but I'm working under Linux, so we're going to hit no. Then we're all set to go. So, let's take a look at index.rst. As I mentioned, this is the first file that you want to get started with. By default, that little tool just creates us a very simplistic index.rst, but we can just hit the road, just this. This up here indicates our title of the first page, saying, welcome to our project's documentation. We're going to put some contents in there, and also some indices and tables, etc. We could simply just start going, type stuff in, blah, 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 blah. This is my introduction to this project. These are the requirements for the project. An XYZ package. Okay? So, if we save that file, to build the output that we want, you can simply type make HTML. And you have to do this all in the same directory. I'll go through, print out a bunch of stuff, hopefully you don't get any error messages. Now, if we navigate to where I have is saved, we see a bunch of other stuff now in our directory. We see build and we see static. If you look at build and then HTML, you can pull up index.html. There's the documentation we've created so far. Very, very, very easy. I told you it was easy. So, let's expand on this a little bit. Let's say we want to add in some additional RST files. So we want to include more pages. We want to add 
a new page to our documentation. Let's say we want to create a tutorial and we want to create a project page. We'll have some more information about the project and we we'll also want to create a code page. Okay. What this will do is that this will tell our, or tell Sphinx to look for files named tutorial.rst, project.rst, and code.rst. So I've already created those in another folder, just because I'm super smart and thought of this ahead. we look at project.rst, you can see I added another title in here. It's indicated by the equal signs under it. I added a section within that, indicated by the dashes. So this is the goals achieved se section. Um, those are the goals, just some descriptions, and a lessons learned section, etc. There's nothing else in here. As far as the tutorial goes, looks very similar. I just have a title of homework 2 tutorial and then some short information about it could go into more detail if I wanted but for this simple example I won't then what's really important to pay attention to is the auto generated documentation this is the page that's going to contain all the auto generated documentation that Sphinx is going to create for us now I've indicated that we're going to use auto module which is the module within Sphinx that generates the documentation for us based on a Python module. So I'm specifying homework 2. Because this is Python, we know Python will look for homework2.py. So if you had, for example, main.py, you'd put main here. And we're going to indicate to just grab the members. So in this case, this is a Python module with strictly functions in it and so it's only going to print out the comments and the functions. Uh, if this was a class, it would just print out the methods from the class. Or if it contained classes in there, rather. So, one important thing to do is change conf.py before you run this. And go down, uncomment this line. You need to tell Sphinx where it can find your code. Right now, we're going to say it's in the current working directory. So as long as you run make from the directory with your code for the project and lost your documentation, you'll be fine. If you're going to split your documentation and your code on, uh, to two separate directories, then you need to specify the path in this line to where your code is at. And that has to be the full path. And of course, I should probably save that. So now we want to make sure we clean up the previous stuff that we generated. Otherwise, in some instances, we may not see any updates. So we'll type make clean and then make HTML again to rebuild the documentation now we've made all these changes. With any luck, we won't see any errors, which there are none. So if we go back here, we hit the refresh button. Ah, it's looking great. We have our table of contents. So we can now see our homework two tutorial. We can now see the project summary with the two different sections. And we also have the auto-generated documentation. These are functions within my homework2.py file. It's grabbed the doc strings from them them for us automatically, plop them in, and now we're set to go. So that's just about all I got for you guys this time. Take it easy.